Natasha Hastings is powerful. She's resilient. She's a daughter. She's a sister. She's a friend. She's a mother. Uruguay looking tired out in lane five. She's not going to win this one tonight. Coming through a shot, River Shapko on the outside there, nearest the camera. It's going to be tight at the line, but Hastings does take it. My word. I never felt forced to run. It was always my choice. There, Williams Mills is trying to come through to challenge for second place, but Hastings is away. She's going to win this one by three meters. It's been an impressive run from the American. 50.52. I was born into Jerk and Field. My mother is an Olympian for Trinidad and Tobago, and my father um, also ran track. So they met in college on track scholarships. They had me all I know is track. Um, so I don't necessarily remember who was my first like offer. I remember getting a lot of like inquiry letters in the mail, um, but I probably knew very early on even like going through the whole visiting process and coaches coming to visit and stuff that I wanted to come to South Carolina. To be honest, um, being a quarter miler at the time, um, my freshman year here was 2004, 2005. 2002, we had won the NCAAs and there was Demetria Washington, Lashenda Demas, Tiffany Williams, well, Williams now, Ross Williams, uh, Demetria Davis, Demetria Washington, and the, the Barber Twins, Lisa and Mickey, and it was just like a quarter powerhouse, so I knew that if I wanted to be a good quarter miler, um, probably coming to South Carolina made sense. Going pro was scary but exciting. Um, I feel like unlike most athletes, or I shouldn't say most athletes, but most elite athletes when I came to South Carolina. I think I, I, I always knew that I wanted to go to the Olympics, but being a pro athlete wasn't necessarily the, something that I had like wrapped my brain around. So like, um, I left college as the number one quarter miler in the world. Um, I made it to world championships, um, but after the collegiate season, I didn't do well. To Hastings, you came fifth, you know, how, it's probably not the result you were hoping for, but take us through the race. And bittersweet, but it was a moment that, again, is only 22. I don't know many 22 year olds. I don't know too many Olympic gold medalists, medalists period, but <laughs> many 22 year olds. So, you know, again, putting things into perspective, but I still wanted that individual 400. Um, I found out I was pregnant December, I don't remember the date, but it was 2018. It was a few days before Christmas. Um, when I found out I was pregnant, I dropped to my knees um, because I felt like my career was, what is my career? Um, I was nursing a knee injury. So I was nursing that back to health, um, back in training for the 2019 track season. I was also newly engaged and um, yeah. I just found out she was pregnant. I was in the restroom at my house. Um, I actually hid my pregnancy from my sponsors and everyone, including my training partners. <laughs> um, for about five months, I don't think I told my, my sponsor until about May and I was due in August. Um, I trained up until the day before I gave birth. Um, so yeah, I kept it a secret. Um, I was very afraid of what it meant for my career. Um, but then I did. I also did a lot of reading and I realized that um, the fears that I had, although is a big problem for women in sports, it's a problem for women in general. Um, when it comes to thinking about expanding your family, everything from job security, healthcare, um, <laughs> when your kid gets sick, who stays home with the kid? <laughs> um, you know, just, you have a human being that is 100% dependent on you. Um, and truth be told, up until I was 33, um, single with no kids, I lived a very selfish, laser-focused career life. So, I knew that I wanted kids, 
I knew that I wanted a family. I just, I also knew that I wanted to be retired before that time came, but there I was for nothing. Man, my son pushes me to grow in ways that um, I want to be a kinder person to myself, but also to him. Um, I want him to have a voice. Not you yeah! Um, and so in allowing him to have a voice means that I have to find my voice and also check my voice sometimes. Um, and so <sighs> pushes my patience. <laughs> he pushes even, you know, retiring from track and like, changing my careers which is something that's inevitable in sport you're gonna your sport is gonna leave you one day you're gonna change um but even the career choice that i made is very um intentional in that i'm highly aware and laser focused if you will on the fact that i'm raising a black boy in south um and so choosing the mental health field was intentional um, because uh, when I was five months postpartum, he was five months old, I became a single mom. Um, I don't know, girl, I'm all famous. <laughs> uh, I'm a survivor. Um, I'm a fighter. <laughs>